everyone, and welcome. This is Around the World Sports, episode number four of my Out of the Park Baseball 21 series with the Boston Red Sox. And it is draft time. It is June 4th, and things are looking pretty good for us right now. We currently sit 41 and 21 unexpectedly good for second place in the American League East uh, game behind the Toronto Blue Jays. And we are led, uh, and I thought long and hard about this nickname, so you guys are going to have to give me credit for this. We are led offensively by the Super Mario Brothers, Mario Gonzalez and Mario Guareca. Uh, Other than those two, it's been a bit of a rough season offensively. Uh, But those two players have really carried us this season. We'll take a look at the offense, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Mario Gonzalez has been just a monster uh, with the bat, a 661 slugging percentage, 23 home runs in just 59 games, good for 2.34. He's on pace for 67 or 68 home runs or something like that, just a crazy number. And then Mario Goreca. Doing it with the bat as well, 352, 422, 597, good for a 1,000 OPS and 2.1 war. That 350 average, um, obviously leading the team, and uh, uh, those two guys are really killing it for us. Josh Naylor was kind of an overthought, an, an afterthought, I guess. We signed him to a, uh, we signed him last year in the middle of the season. Um, on June 6th, he played for us for half a season, uh, did okay. And then we brought him back this year on a one year, $2.4 million contract. And he's done a really nice job for us. So last year in 51 games hit 255, had an 819 OPS this year. He's already got eight home runs in 39 games. He's posting a 950 OPS, um, and providing some additional pop in our lineup. So Naylor's doing really well. Kato Mori, um, his offense is slipping significantly. He's putting up a 60 OPS plus, uh, but still playing really good defense. Joey Van Luke uh, doing what he does, uh, hitting a bunch of doubles, hitting for a high average, 506 slugging percentage this year. He's hitting for a little more power than he hit last year. I uh, got four home runs in 41 games this year. Only hit five in 93 last year, so he's doing all right. Christian Pash are doing a pretty nice job at the top of the order. The average is, uh, the average is a little low, which is skewing things. But eight home runs, tw- or excuse me, seven home runs, 26 RBIs, team leading 23 doubles on uh, playing an average center field. Same thing, Daniel Corona Jr., providing some nice pop. Average is light, again, but average defense. My catching tandem doing a, a pretty solid job. Seven home runs, 28 RBIs between the two of them. Uh, Manny Flores is struggling a bit this season, although he is putting up a 514 uh, OPS. He was hurt at the beginning of the season, so he's only played 37 games. Um, but we're expecting that that on base percentage to increase as well. And then and Campo Sano um, are all struggling to some various shape or form. Um, pitching. Uh, things are looking pretty good. Asa lacey has been out for about two weeks with an injury, but prior to his injury, he was 6-1 and one with a 2-3-0 ERA. Our pitching staff has been very, very good. Uh, it really is the reason we are where we are right now. Casey Mize, 6-1 and one with a 3-3-3 ERA, but only a 251 FIP, good for a 3.1 more and only 13 starts. Casey Mize has been outstanding for us. Sixto Sanchez, 5-0 and oh with a 2-8-1 ERA. Uh, Sixto has been a rock at the top of our rotation this year. Dustin May, uh, he's only four and four, uh, but with a two seven eight ERA, struck out eighty three and in seventy seven innings. He's been a great great find for us. Jackson Coar in that number five spot, five and two with a three two three ERA, pitching a little above his means right now. As you can see, his FIP is about four point five. Um, and then we also put Colby Kubacek in the starting rotation for Lacey, and he's done okay. Um, in three starts. Our bullpen hasn't been very good, which is kind of what we thought was going to happen. Uh, they haven't been terrible, but they haven't been great. So that is that is a place we're going to have to um, look to upgrade as, as the season goes on. Jake McCalhoun hasn't been bad. Um, good for almost one war. Maddox Bruns has been all right, but... Nobody's been particularly good. Lewis Perales has got 17 saves already, so uh, he's done okay there. But all in all, the bullpen's been a bit of a struggle. Financially, we're in good shape. Um, huge bump in our 
uh, our, our attendance and our revenue this year. We've got some money for free agents. We've got some money for extensions. Look at our salaries. Uh, not a whole lot we want to do anything with here. Uh, Jackson Coar, um, we'll probably let him play out his contract unless he um, just wants a minimal amount uh, to come back next year. So we'll see. Same with Josh Naylor. You know, he's playing well, but how long can you expect that to last? Really, everybody else is is um, uh, we we we're gonna have some some uh, interesting. Um, I guess decisions here at the end of next year when both Sanchez and Lacey can opt out of their deals. So we'll see what happens. Hito Mori is a potential trade uh, option if the bat doesn't start to come around a little bit. So we'll have some decisions to make, but we're still a couple years away from from our our core uh, starting to get. Um, Starting to get expensive, Manny Flores and Gonzalez and Guareca. So a couple couple years away from that. So, uh, yeah. So it is draft time. We are scheduled to pick sixth in this year's draft. Uh, and if you look at the mock draft, they're expecting us to take Robbie Cazone, a third baseman. There are some good offensive options in the draft this year, so we'll have to see what falls to us. But you can see really good power bat here. Um, Power bat, he can play first, second, third, or short. Uh, we'll have to see if he lands with us. There is a pitcher that I had my eye on. Was it Jim Barge? Yeah. Um, he's scheduled to go 17, so we'd kind of be picking him over slot significantly, but that movement and that control, I, I mean, that's that's elite. So um, we'll see. Let's, see. Let's get to the draft and, and, and see who's available. Let's pick until us. Let's just look at the let's see who went. So Rob Ron Ingram went first. Pretty good pitcher. Not great control. Bob Muratov went number two. More well rounded. Went to Texas. Jose Malare was the number three pick. Uh, I wouldn't have taken him third, uh, especially with with your personality traits over here. Uh, Phil Galladay. He was kind of that first bat that I would have looked at. Really, really solid outfield bat. And then Jorge Vega, um, a pretty well-rounded outfield bat. So it's our pick. So let's take a look. Let's see what's available. Go to, let's look at all the first. So. We have Robbie Cazone, who was the person, let's see, is that who the scouting director wants us to take? Yep. Robbie Roadrunner Cazone. Um, decent contact, good gap, good uh, power, decent eye, decent K potential. Not a very good defense defender right now. A good base runner. Um, Chris Jackson is another option. Good contact, good power. Guy's not quite as good. Defense is still pretty poor. Um, it's a high school student. Cazone is also a high school student. Brad Picklesmeyer, Pickles, Pickles Zimmer, Brad Pickles Zimmer. Um, good power, good contact. Doesn't have great discipline. A lot of good bats in this year's draft. Good pitchers. Arge is there. Ush is I Ooh, man. Um, let's look at I know you don't want to draft based on need. If we look at our team, where are we weak when it comes to uh, to our prospects our top prospect is steve Aiky. then we've got omer Lo so it's so in our top 10 we've got four well doesn't really help four pitchers and six batters um oh i kind of want to take the third baseman
This he's really good. Artistic, artistic. I mean, he's still a ways away. Absolutely, he's still a ways away. But so is Kazone. This power potential. He's six six. Low greed, low leader, low loyalty. I think it's a tough decision. This is a tough decision. Do I go Kazone or do I go Barge or do I go Azel? Does it say Azel is going to go to city? All the way down here at 24th. All right, we're going to take we're going to take his own. I don't know if it's the right move, um, but you don't get elite power potential very often. So Robbie Roadrunner Kazone will be our next pick. We still have some options. Let's look at pitchers now, see if any starters are still available. This Clark is still available. He's got three pitches. Three good pitches. Change up will never develop. So he's going to be a three pitch starter, which isn't the worst thing in the world. What about Zach Lynch? Went to Nebraska. This might be the pick. better stuff. His fastball is already at 97 to 99. He's 21. Got three good pitches. Jump back in and get another. Power bad. Go pitcher. I think we're going to take Zach Lynch with our number two pick. He can already throw 97. His stamina is only a 45. He can already throw 97 to 99. So we're going to take Next pick. I was hoping Clark would still be there. He's not so what do we have for batters? Rado a catcher, Pat Hader, Rose, let's do this. And Clem. He is our next pick. Make him a hitter. And he immediately becomes, and he obviously wants a ton over slot, and that's fine. That's another elite bat, which is something we don't have enough of in our minor league system. Chris Quinton. Hey. Power in. Got some people, some power, but they. Let's, let's go back. Cheers. Up check. Possible to sign any. Um. Uh, Wado. going to be filler hitters that can potentially good numbers. all right so we are running out of uh
space here quickly. So not space, but we're running out of uh, quality players very quickly. Uh, Traster or Aguirre? Aguirre, I think, because he's got he's got a little work ethic stuff, and that's they don't develop as well. Um, we'll go with Jimmy Traster. It's over slot too, but that's fine. Sam Bledsoe. Sure, he's got some power. And we will let the computer rest. The computer rest. I guess to click the wrong button by mistake. It will sign our picks. We spent a lot of money. It's fine. Got the money. We may as well use it. See so how we go. I, I literally, guys, I just pointed at the computer screen to show you that we have a lot of money. We have $41 million left. So we're going to go ahead and just meet the Got to remember to make Dwayne Clem a batter. I'm going to make him a batter, but a two-way player so that he can also work on his pitching. He was a two-star pitcher, so. Not getting eight. All right, so it is June 4th. Um, yeah, I, we're, we're, I've mentioned we're, we're not in terrible shape. We get Lacey back tomorrow, which will be nice, which will help the bullpen. Um, we'll keep an eye out for some bullpen arms. Um, Maybe a upgraded shortstop, but otherwise I'm pretty content with with where our team currently sits. So when we come back, it'll be I'll probably stop at June second just to do the international draft really quickly. Uh, so that part, that section will only be a couple of minutes, but we'll stop the international draft and then we will go ahead to the trade deadline. So I'll be right back. It is July second. Uh, that means it is time for the international free agent signing period to start. Uh, before we do that, a uh, couple small things. Uh, really, I guess just one small thing, or two small things, I guess. So we are still in second place, 55 and 31. We do actually have the second best record in the American League, behind, or I guess third best record behind the Blue Jays and the Angels. Uh, it's The American League East is just destroying the competition in the AL this year. You can see four teams with over 500 records. AL Central, the entire division is under 500. Um, so AL East is, is running wild over the rest of the American League this year. Um, we lost Kristen Pash for the rest of the season. He tore his Achilles tendon, uh, which is a shame because he was putting up a 760 OPS, had been playing some better baseball, been playing some good defense. So he will be out for the rest of the year, which sucks. Uh, so that forces us to put Mario Camposano into the full-time lineup. And he's, I mean, he's not doing bad, but Pash was a better option. So uh, it is what it is. Uh, offensively, uh, we're still doing all right. Still being led by, by Gonzalez and Goreka. Uh, Josh Naylor has continued to have a solid year for us. Uh, but it's our pitching staff still. Casey Mize, Asa Lacey, each 9-2. Um, Jackson Coar 267 ERA, Sixto Sanchez 701. We only had one All Star, believe it or not, and that was Mario Gonzalez, uh, was the lone All Star for us, and he's on pace for 55 home runs this season. So slowed down a little bit this past month, but uh, some of the other players looks like look like they have picked up a little bit. So uh, we're also without Daniel Corona for the next two weeks, so we will have to do something about that. Just stick Bonilla in at third base and let him play for a couple of weeks. And, uh, yeah, that's what we'll do there. Uh, all right, so international amateurs. Let's see what's available to us. Players. So we have a pretty good pitcher and a couple of hitters. Leo Carrera. Wow, he's
Flavian Giardina. Hmm. 16-year-old pitcher or 16-year-old... That's a real question. I feel like this is the pick. Good communicator and consensus seeker. They're also average on him, but they actually like him more. OSA actually likes him more. Giardina. Wow. Um, hmm. Tough decision. My concern with the pitching prospect is just that, that it's a pitching prospect, and you never know what you're going to get out of that. Um, the blood is arm, and that could be it. And if Carrera is this good offensively at shortstop, I think we're going to go Carrera. It's $5 million. I'm going to keep an eye. I'm going to shortlist him just so I can, um, I just want to see how he develops. So, all right, so we are about four weeks away from the trade deadline. Again, bullpen is, you know, our bullpen ERA is fine. So, I mean, maybe we don't have to make a move. Um, Maury has started to pick it up with the bat a little bit so it can justify his glove, uh, which is outstanding, or his glove can justify his bat, I should say. Um, Corona hasn't been great, so maybe a third base uh, upgrade. And then outfield, we, we're going to need a, a center fielder, I think. So we could potentially upgrade in center field, first base, center field, left field, first base, third base, or shortstop. So we got lots of lots of places to upgrade. But if we're going to upgrade, we're going to truly upgrade. Like if we're going to do it, I'm going to go all out, and, and I'm going to find myself you know, an elite player to, to fit into one of these positions. So Flores is good, but he's not great. Um, Camposano is better off as a backup. Though, um, unless Pash's numbers drop due to his injury, he'll be penciled in in center field next year. So more than likely, we're looking at first base, third base, or if we can find an elite um, left fielder. You know, again, not that Naylor's played badly at all, but... Um, an elite left fielder. So that's going to be what we're going to be looking for, I think. Uh, when we come back, it'll be... Oh, and our Rule 5 guy, Zong, Yao, Zong Yan Ta, has pitched really well as of late for us. You can see a .480 RA in his last 11 games. So uh, really solid there. So yeah, when we come back, it'll be the trade deadline. And uh, you will likely have made a move or two. So be right back. All right, guys, trade deadline has come and gone, and we made some, I said we were going to be busy, and we were busy. You can see we are 72 and 41. Um, really nice month, month and a half uh, that we have lately. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, let's look at the deals first, and then we'll look at the stats, and then we'll call it. So, so we made three trades during the uh, during the last month, month and a half. So the first was, and they were all in July apparently. Don't look ahead. So the first deal was with the Philadelphia Phillies. We sent Kevin Pretty and Jerry Gonzalez, the number 99 prospect in baseball, to the Phillies in exchange for 23-year-old first baseman Devin Cassie. And Cassie is, um, has got that, that, um, Rating spread that I like, the high gap power, high home run power, high eye and discipline. Average will be a, bit, a little bit light, but that's okay. Um, and he comes in. He hasn't played higher than double A ball, but we're going to throw him right into the fire. He's going to become our starting first baseman. You can see through 16 games, he's done okay. The power is not quite there yet, but still putting up a 381 on base and a 442 slugging. So even if this year his OPS is driven by his on base percentage, that's fine. Uh, he should be a middle of the bat, a middle of the order power bat um, going forward. And to get him, we gave up Kevin Pretty, who we got last season. Um, Pretty had stagnated a little bit. Um, he might be a little bit better across the board, 
uh, offensively, um, but I think in the long run, um, Cassie's going to be a, a, a better bet. And then we also gave up uh, Jerry Gonzalez, who is the number 99 or was the number 99 prospect, not, is the number 99 prospect in baseball, but he's stuck behind Mario Gonzalez. Um, so I was okay giving him up. So that was the first deal. Second deal, we sent Manny Flores and Colby Kubacek to the Cincinnati Reds, getting Austin Hendrick in return. Flores, um, I mean, not a bad hitter. I mean, he was hitting 260, put up about 800 OPS both seasons for us. Uh, it was pretty good last year, 26 home runs, some decent speed. Um, but he had pretty much peaked, and he wasn't going to be that that fearful middle of the bat, middle of the order bat that we needed. We were 14th in the American League in power coming into the All-Star break. We we needed to improve our offense or at least our power. And we also gave up Colby Kubacek, who we got from Atlanta uh, a season ago or a season and a half ago. Um, the bullpen arm, I mean, again, not a terrible player. Uh, five good pitches, but he's already 29 years old. And in return... Uh, we got what's probably going to amount to being a rental, uh, depending on what he asked for in the offseason. We pick up Austin Hendrick. Hendrick has hit uh, 30 home runs or more, one, two, three, four, five, six seasons in a row. Uh, he's hit over 50 or over 43 times, over 50 twice, and over 60 once. Uh, and he, we are going to stick him in actually left field. And you can see his left field, his uh, ratings have started to increase already. And in nine games for us, um, doing just fine. Three home runs, seven RBIs, 962 OPS. He becomes another power bat in the middle of our lineup. You can see his contract expires at the end of this year. Um, probably going to want a lot of money. Yeah. So, I mean, we could afford to bring him back. I don't know if we need to. Uh, we'll we'll deal with that at the end of the season. But for now, gives us another power bat. So we added a lot of power at the trade deadline. And then the third deal was actually offered to us. The White Sox had Ben Bowden on the trading block. They offered him to us. And all we had to give up was nothing. So apparently they were just looking to get rid of the salary this year. So we pick up Ben Bowden, who uh, immediately becomes uh, probably our most consistent um, our consistent pitcher, and he was born in the same city as me. So, um, yeah, he becomes our our uh, our, our go to middle relief guy. We're gonna pitch him till his arm falls off. Uh, his contract is also up at the end of this year. So, uh, made three moves. Um, one of them for the future in Cassie. The other two, Hendrick and Bowden, are potential rentals. Um, but that's okay. Uh, Ronier Quintero is out for the next four weeks with a fractured hand. That sucks. So Diego Cartaya will step in to that starting rotation for us. And you can see, I mean, you know, that really does a number for our for our um, our offense. And what it actually does is it against lefties is it moves or against righties, excuse me, it moves Van Luke to the bench. Uh, Naylor is posted a a, a ten twenty two OPS, so I, I can't. Can't bench Josh Naylor against righties right now. Uh, Van Luke will play against lefties. Van Luke will play. Uh, I guess they have him at, I have him at first base here, so that's fine. Um, yeah, so those are the deals that we've made. Kendrick has to go into the lineup there. I'm not going to bat him second. I'm gonna switch Reka in him. So if you look at offensively, uh, some of our players, uh, Hendrick leads the team in war. I mean, obviously, most of that was with Cincinnati. Break a 3.4 war, still hitting 328, 371, 553. Hato Mori, uh, his offense has really come along. Uh, he's up to a, an 80 OPS plus, but he's a 3.2 win player because of his defense. Josh Naylor in part-time action has put up a three war. Um, well worth the $2.5 million we spent. Mario Gonzalez has... Um, Slipped a little bit, but still uh, 32 home runs, 96 RBIs, uh, 2.9 war. And Luke, uh, that power's coming along, so it's making that line look a whole lot nicer, which is good. Corona Jr., the average is still a little low, but he's playing pretty good defense, providing a little bit of power as well. And then everybody else. We didn't. We made the decision to hang tight in center field. I think with the the offense we have now, Camposano can can play center field and and 
pitching wise, uh, Casey Mize 11 and four, a 2.51 FIP, 5.1 WAR. He's been just outstanding. Dustin May again. The average is a little off at eight, eight and seven, or the the win loss record is a little off at eight and seven. But three five four ERA, three and a half uh, WAR. Sixto Sanchez ten and two on the season, 148 Ks and 138 innings. Uh, he's bounced back really nicely after struggling initially after coming over from the Cubs a year ago. And he's 31 years old, and Sanchez has just picked up his 100th win. So congratulations to Sixto. Uh, Jackson Coar, 7 and 5, 287 ERA. He's been really good. And Asalasi's 13 and 2. Uh, his FIP is a little high, so he's probably pitching a little, a little bit lucky to, to where he is. Uh, Luis Perales has 31 saves. Our bullpen, again, not great, but I'm hoping with Bowden stepping in that that will, um, that will solidify things for us. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Anything else I want to look at? Uh, we're still, we still have some money. Um, our revenue is still way up from last year. Still no real issues with, with money. Um, in fact, our payroll is going to drop by $16 million next year, partially because of Hendrick and Bowden and Coar and Naylor coming off the books. So um, we will have some decisions to make. I'd rather not Naylor and Hendrick both go. Uh, I'd like to bring one of them back. Um, but yeah, Naylor, $12 million a year, I'm not all that comfortable with. So we'll have to uh, have to see what happens there. What does Bowden want? Eight and a half. Yeah, so we've got, excuse me, we've got some uh, some decisions to make as we get to the end of the season. But again, our, our big names don't start to ask for a lot of money until until twenty thirty one. Yeah, Gonzalez and Gore asking for money. Canero's gonna jump up. Um, so that's when we'll really have some decisions to make. But for now, things are looking good. Seventy two and forty one, one game out of first place. A couple of big deals going into the trade deadline to help push us over the edge. Um, and when we come back, it'll be the end of the season. So uh, please leave a like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts. And until we talk again, everybody take care. Bye-bye.